if I was to ask you what hunger looks like in your areas, places you live, how would, what would you say? Um, it looks like me. It doesn't really have a face. You can't tell who's hungry and who isn't because I think the large majority is hungry. Um, yeah, everyone is hungry, so there isn't really a specific face that you can pin to hunger. So the right to food looks like having space and the agency to grow your own food. The right to food looks like having the autonomy to choose what you buy and what you eat every day. The right to food is having a, having a wholesome, nutritious meal to eat every day for families, all families, all households. And it's difficult to imagine. In the state that we live in and the reality of things. Uh, mentally, I think that creates a ton of strain that, that no one really talks about. No one really talks about being hungry and not having enough food. Um, and I think that's a feeling that, that people feel quite often that there isn't enough food. I, I haven't. Like there's times when I've thought, okay, what am I going to eat today? And my solution to not thinking about that is to stay constantly busy, to constantly be up to something. But then there comes a time when I can't even motivate myself to go beyond that. Yeah, I think psychologically it stagnates an entire population. And we just constantly stay in survival mode. And when you're in survival mode, you can't think beyond today, you can't think beyond the next 12 hours. Um, yeah, it's sort of like, yeah, it's hand to mouth. With what was around me, a lot of people lost their jobs, they lost their incomes, um, and then they found themselves um, faced with a whole lot. When I'm saying a whole lot is you would find that in a typical household, um, a father would get up and go to work. Maybe there are two or three children that would be at school the whole day. Suddenly everyone is at home. Suddenly there's a lot of mouths um, to be fed. And suddenly then the realization that we actually do not have um, enough food because then you'd have to prepare more meals than you would normally. Um, sometimes you'd, so in some households they don't even make breakfast because the school's feeding scheme would provide um, breakfast and then they would provide lunch for the children. So many of them did not go and queue for the food. Um, during the survey, we would ask, do you know that there is a soup kitchen? Are you aware of a soup kitchen that is in the area? They would say yes. Do you go and queue or um, get food? They would say no. The reason for that was we found that um, there is a lot of stigma that is attached to being hungry. That is the norm in the communities that we live in. So imagine someone who would be working and providing and being able to buy food, suddenly finding themselves not having food and having to go queue. So they, they have this of what would people say? If my observation then comes very close to home, where we've seen the lived experience of people who've lost their jobs, who've really struggling to access food. You know, it, it's worse with this war in Ukraine that we're seeing, and all of a sudden these prices, price rises, going through the roof. You know. I think a, a community nutritional hub can, is already a space. I mean, community kitchens currently are already a space whereby people go to receive food. It's an, it, there are emergency hub spots for food insecurity, for hunger and many more interrelating social issues that are related to um, food insecurity and hunger. Soup kitchens, popularly known as soup kitchens, but as food agency Cape Town, we started rethinking them um, as community kitchen based on the outcomes of the survey that we did, how, how they are, get stigmatized and how people don't feel comfortable to go in the kitchens. But if you think of a community kitchen and our vision of a community kitchen is a space where people can go and not just get a plate of, of food, but can learn a skill um, where we try to build sustainable and resilient communities. So you come into a kitchen, you volunteer your services, 
you can help with dishing up you can help with um, cleaning up for instance or washing the dishes and then you don't feel that you are just getting a plate of food you feel that you have contributed towards that plate of food in Ogadogo. again my appeal to other international organizations and local government is partner with local communities dream together, plan together, find solutions together, and support community-led organizations. I believe that the solutions are within the communities. We love to see young people take up space in these spaces because I, uh, young people come with a, a newness that is very oblivious to what the problem is. And sometimes that obliviousness feeds a lot into generating new ideas. So, yeah, the call to action would be people to be educated on food, on food agency, on their rights to food, and to be enabled for them to practice their rights to food.